about Hosanna in the highest. We want to talk about raising a hallelujah. We want to talk about being excited about coming into contact with Jesus in your life. Now, I want to ask you a question. When you think of the word Messiah, what is the concept that you have in your head? Like, you know, words have associations for us. Amen. And we hear words and they mean things to us. Messiah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. These are words that they don't exist in a vacuum. They don't exist outside of context. And Messiah is one of those words. And I was thinking about it a lot this week because I'm wondering if the way we see Messiah is even remotely related to the way Jews saw Messiah. And who's right? Our view of what we think about Messiah? Or their view and what they thought about Messiah? Messiah, by the way, is their word, right? They had a certain expectation of Messiah. You've got to remember, before Christ comes, in the intertestamental time, there's this thing called the Maccabean War, right? Where the Zealot Jews are at war against the Greek oppressors, and they're coming in, and they're wanting to tear down the temple. And this is where we have that whole story that becomes Hanukkah today. Right? But it wasn't just that. After the Maccabean Wars, Pompey was defeated and the Romans took over and the Roman Senate appointed a king. Think about that. The Roman Senate appointed a king over Judea. Hmm. Roman king over Judea. You, 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 do you know who that was? Herod. Do, do you know what Herod's official title was? Given to him by the Roman Senate? King of the Jews. Let me help you out here. Herod the Great. Behold, Judea, your Messiah. You see, words have context. Words have meaning. Messiah meant something to different people at different times. Like, think about it. I, 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 when I hear Herod the Great, King of the Jews, I think blasphemy. Amen. You know what Jews thought? Blasphemy! <laughs> you know what they were waiting for? The real Messiah. And, and in their mind, the, the, the real Messiah that was coming, he, he was going to be a warrior. In their mind, the real Messiah that was coming, he was going to be like King David. The real Messiah, in their mind, who was coming, he was going to slay who? The Philistines. He was going to slay the modern day Gentiles. He was going to liberate them from the oppression of the Roman Senate. And an Edomite king, yeah, King Herod was Edomite, and he converted to Judaism in order to be appointed king of the Jews by the Roman Senate. So they're looking for a warrior Messiah. They're looking for someone to come and overthrow the Romans. And, and, and the Messiah that comes to them is not a warrior. The Messiah that comes to them is not a lion. He's a lamb. The Messiah that comes to them is not trying to overthrow Romans. He's trying to restore prostitutes. Oh, come on. The Messiah that comes to them is a Messiah who meets prostitutes at the temple and sides with the prostitute over the Pharisees. 
He's no David. He doesn't even have a sling. He's siding with Goliath. I mean, he takes Matthew Levi, who is a Roman tax collector, and he makes him one of the twelve disciples. And he goes around to lepers and heals them. There was a centurion, like the oppressor, and he had a son who was sick. And this would be Messiah healed a centurion's boy. He's supposed to be cutting their heads off. Oh. Jesus didn't fit the picture. Jesus was not the Messiah they were looking for. Yeah, they wanted to be saved, but, but, but they wanted to be saved from Rome, not sin. They wanted to be saved from political oppression, not the oppression of Satan. Now, we got to be careful, Christians, because there's a whole lot of Christians out there who are more concerned about the political realm of their faith than the spiritual realm of their faith. Are you following me this morning? Amen. It's easy to confuse politics and faith. He can't be Messiah. I don't care what Nicodemus is reporting back at the council. I don't care what Joseph of Aramas is saying about him. I don't care if he ate at Simon the Pharisee's house. He cannot be Messiah. He is letting prostitutes touch him in public places. Yeah, we do that as Pharisees, but when no one's looking. But Jesus, oh my Jesus. Jesus won them. With the heart. Miracle by miracle. Act of love by act of love. Compassion by compassion. No, he, he could not change Caiaphas' mind. No, he could not change the, the, the high priest's mindset. No, he could not change the Sanhedrin's mindset. But what he changed was the people. Are you with me today, Shelby? You're with me, right? Good, good. Because what he changed was the people. And so what happens is absolutely amazing. He's going into Jerusalem for the last time, and he's not coming in being carried by a horse-drawn chariot as a king should. He's not coming in even on the top of a stallion. I'm not even going to go all King James on you. Because some of you can't handle the King James this morning. He came in riding on a colt. The smallest animal he could find. Hadn't killed one Philistine, hadn't chopped one head off. He did have a zealot in his disciples, but, but he calmed that zealot down to do things like cast out demons instead of kill people. But he won them how? You see, the Pharisees now couldn't stop him. The Sahedrins couldn't stop him. The Sadducees couldn't stop him. The people are yelling this word. What's this word? What? Hosanna. You don't say Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> They're yelling what word? Hosanna. Excuse me, I... I, I I think I took a wrong turn on my way in. I think I ended up in the Catholic Church somehow. <laughs> They're yelling what? One, two, three. Hosanna! Yeah. They're yelling Hosanna! Now, Hosanna is a word that, that has a specific meaning. Remember, words have context. 
Words have meaning. What you think about Messiah has to do with when you lived, where you lived, and why you lived. And what you think about Hosanna does too. Because Hosanna also is a Jewish word. It's not your word. And here's what it means. Save us. Please. It's a polite term. Save us, please. It's a messianic term. You can only say Hosanna to an Israeli king. No, no, no. You can't say it to a Pharisee. No, 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 no. You can't say it to a member of the Sanhedrin. No, no, no. That's blasphemy. Even to now. You can't walk up to the pastor and say, Hosanna, that was a sermon to the highest. <laughs> That's also blasphemy. Hosanna is a particular Hebrew word that means save us, please, our king. What's it mean? I say Hosanna, you say? Come on, you, you got to help. You got to mic, Marvin. You got to help them. Right. I say, Hosanna. You say, save us, please, our king. I say, Hosanna. You say, save us, please, our king. Now you're saying it like you're happy. You're not doing Santa too oppressed to me. <laughs> I say, Hosanna. You say, save us, please, our king. Yeah, because they're in trouble. So they don't care if the Pharisees agree. They don't care if the Sanhedrin agree. They don't care if the Sadducees agree. They need a king to rescue them now. So they say, Hosanna, and you say? Exactly. And John records, John records in the 12th chapter, the 13th verse, he says, so they took branches and palm trees and they went out to meet him crying? Which means? Save us, please, our king. Ooh, some people are about to get mad now. <laughs> Jesus is coming down the Mount of Olives, entering Jerusalem by the temple through the Kidron Valley. And they are yelling out, Save us, please, our king, in the presence of the Pharisees. Herod happens to be in town too. This is not looking good. What's Herod's title? Herod the Great, King of the Jews. And they're yelling, Hosanna, which means? Save us, please, our King. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the what? What? Don't say it too loud. The Pharisees are going to hear you. What are the people saying? Save us, please, our king. You see, I can't help people in high places. I can't help presidents. I can't help kings. But the people when they get what Jesus is, the people, when they get who Jesus is, you can't hold them back. Right, Shelby? You can't hold them back. Right? Except for, in five days, they're going to go from Hosanna to crucify Him. And I want you to know something. It's very important, because you finally all arrived. As soon as you stop praising Jesus, you're on the way to crucifying him. Wow. A dead church is a dying church. A dead church is a church that doesn't understand grace. A dead church is a church without a king. A dead church is a church 
that will invert everything it believes, a church that will invert everything it teaches, a church that will invert everything it thinks to crucify the mission of Jesus. It took them about five days. Now there's lots of discussion. How do we know it was the same people? Well, we don't. And maybe it was some of them, maybe it wasn't. But I've been to old Jerusalem. It's not that big. I mean, it's in layers now. Going upward and it's still not that big. So I'm telling you, some of those people who said Hosanna, which means? Are the same people saying, crucify him. Luke goes on to tell us a story from his perspective as we read this morning. And as he wrote along, they spread out their what? Their cloaks. As he went along, they, they spread out their cloaks. As he went along, they took off their fine garments. They took off their expensive clothing. And they threw them down. Because they realized he was king. They realized who he was. And when they realized who he was, they realized that he was too holy to be on the back of a colt. And they realized that the colt that carried him was too holy to walk on mud. We, we can't get here for 11 o'clock to save our lives. They take off their best garments and throw it down and say, we are unworthy. Oh, by the way, you know how you get here for 11? It's failproof. I mean, I got stuck on the 395 today. You know how you get here by 11? Plan for Sabbath school. If you plan for Sabbath school, the latest you will be here is 11. <laughs> I'm still figuring out how to get here for Sabbath school, but that's a different problem. Do you understand what's going on? If we understand who Jesus is, all of our excuses have to go away. If we understand who Jesus is, we can't make worship about us. If we understand who Jesus is, we can't... Go around acting like it's a gift that I might give my coat to this cult to this cult to walk on. They got palm branches, they got coats, they got whatever it takes. They are worshiping their king. And as he's drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples begin to what? Begin to what? Begin to what? Rejoice. Just like you started to do at opening song. And praise Him. With what kind of voice? Oh, but worship's too loud, you say. For all, why? The mighty works. How did He win them? By His love. What of His mighty works? His love. Are we not praising Him because He does no mighty works in our life? Amen. Are we not praising Him because we don't see His love in our lives? Because if, Marvin, if, if we're seeing His might, if, if we're seeing His works, if we're seeing His love, how are we going to be coming in here? I'm, I'm going to stop there. That they had seen him. And they're yelling out, Hosanna, which means? And they're also yelling out, Hallelujah. And Hallelujah means Hallelujah. Praise Yah, as in Yahweh, all people. How many people? All. Hosanna means? Hallelujah means? Praise Yahweh, all the people. 
Hosanna means? Save us, please, our King. Hallelujah means? Praise Yahweh, all you people. I don't want to stop because you're finally doing it. <laughs> Amen. They're having an encounter with their king. Amen. Saying, Luke 38, bless what? Bless but I, I got to check. Because uh, I might have made a mistake there. No. Lest who? But the Pharisees are there. This is going into the city. This is the gate. He's coming down from the Mount of Olives. Those of you who have been coming to Wednesday night know exactly where he's coming down from. He's coming down from the Mount of Olives. He is going through the Kidron Valley. The priests are there. They're at the, just outside the pinnacle of the temple. The priests are there. And Herod's palace is probably just on the other side of the temple. And his title is Herod the Great, the... And they got the guts to say, Blessed is the king. I hope some smart Pharisee was running to go get Herod to say, That's what they meant. Who comes in the what? In the name of who? Yahweh. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You can only say Hosanna if you can say Hallelujah. Because who sends Messiah? Yahweh. Right? There can be no Hallelujah without, or there can be no Hosanna without what? Hallelujah, because Messiah comes from Yahweh. We are praising Hallelujah because of the arrival of Hosanna. Wow. Right? Yeah. So if we have no Hallelujah on Sabbath morning, it must mean that we have no king. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. It's called deductive reasoning. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And then verse 39, everybody, everybody's favorite verse, right? <laughs> she was over there. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, and then he reads it. Oh. <laughs> And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. You know, some people come to me and they say the same thing, right? I, I get a call once in a while from the conference office. Like, some people came through your church, Marvin, and, 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 and they want us to rebuke you. <laughs> and I say, thank you for calling. They're like, okay, we're done. And then some of you show up in my office and say the same. But here's the thing. What's stopping you from praising your king? Now, now, now I'm not going to stay here a little, just for a little bit, but, but, but i got to ask you, what is stopping you from praising your king? Because sometimes you've, you're praising. Like, I don't care how you praise. Because you know I can't dance and some of you can. You know I clap like this when you clap like that. Whatever rhythm you're on, I'm on the opposite one. <laughs> I'm genetically rhythm challenged. You know, I practice sometimes at my desk with your YouTube videos. Can't even get it when I'm alone. I mute my mic when I sing to you so I don't wreck it. But I sing. Amen. Amen. 
You might not worship. You might not praise God the same way I do. But whatever way is authentic to you has to be happening on Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Now, I know how this works. If one person at the front starts raising their hands, all of the people behind them that want to raise their hands and praise God suddenly do it. But my question for you in the back who do it when the people in the front do it, why aren't you doing it in the back when you want to? If you want to stand up and sing, stand up and sing. Sometimes the people praising God the most are those little babies running down the aisle here sometimes. I want to say nobody stop them. At least they got some joy. You know why we stop? Fear of the Pharisees. Fear of, like, we're, we're, we're not talking about speaking in tongues. We're not talking about, you know, charismatic movement. We're not even talking about backflips in the aisle. We're just talking about being authentic and real and being in the presence of the king. Either Jesus is king or he's not. Amen. And if your response is this, or if your response is like most people like me, we're like this. We might do this. It don't matter. Be you. Amen. You're in the presence of who? The king. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to be in the presence of my king. Amen. Except for my king. And this is what he's got to say. I tell you, if these were silent, who are these? The people whose hearts he's touched. Has he touched your heart? I don't know it's true or not. Who are these? The people whose hearts he's touched. Has he touched your heart? Amen. Hosanna. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm with you, Pastor. <laughs> they said Hosanna, which means? <laughs> I'm just going to go sit down here for a while. <laughs> I tell you. If these, I tell you, if these, I tell you, if these, I tell you, if these, don't want to scare you, I tell you, if these are silent, the stones would cry out. Marvin, you going to bring your rock collection next week? <laughs> Because we might need it. Oh, my Lord. No. No. I tell you, if these were what? Silent. The what? The very stones would cry out. The very stones would cry out. I came across this this week. I love it. David Ashrick, he's an Adventist personality. I like some of the things he says. I don't like some of the things he says. That's not the point. I like this thing he said. <laughs> God didn't call us to make Westerners. I'm a Westerner. Some of you are. Some of you are not. So this is an equal offending situation. Some of us are Westerners and some of us are not. God, but God did not call us to make Westerners. You know who made Westerners? Come on. You know who made Westerners? Colonists. Colonists. In the name of Christianity. You know what the byproduct of making Westerners in the name of Christianity was? Slavery. Slavery. 
I'm a white Westerner. I'm just telling you how it is. The byproduct of making Westerners with Christianity is slavery. The kind of slavery that brings people to church and makes them afraid to say, Hosanna! Hallelujah! Hi, God. So, I saw this. I just loved it so much. So, you know, I had to tweet it out to Twitter. I tweeted out to Twitter, 55 minutes later, I got a bite. So someone, you're not going to be, I'm going to pull it up, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'll read it to you. Someone bit back. I love it. They bit back. They were like so fast. Okay, so here it is. God did not call us to make Westerners. He called us to make? Oh, by the way, don't we have a mission statement or something? Make Westerners of all nations? Is that what you said? Make Westerners of all nations? Make what? Make disciples where? All nations, right? God didn't call us to make what? He called us to make what? And here's the bite I got back. It's beautiful. But they do have to sing non-syncopated. Are you getting what they're saying? Shelby, what's syncopation? Show us some syncopation. Come on, pick up your stick. Show us some syncopation. Come on. Right? Okay, Pastor, we agree with you. He didn't call us to make questioners. He called us to make disciples, but they can sing with syncopation. Are you getting what they're saying? Oh, come on. You know I'm not going to leave it there, right? So I tweeted back one of our song services. <laughs> and I said, not my church. He, 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 he. I believe. Question. Y'all going to make me liar? Because when we have praise service, like we had praise service this morning, and, and like a third of you are here. Because when we have praise service, we have this morning, and a third of you are here, and, and you're like, you're clapping worse than I am. And I raise my hand, y'all looking at me like, there's the weirdo at the front again. Look at these rocks. Remember these rocks. Because Jesus reached them with his heart. How is Jesus going to raise a hallelujah in you? Marvin. Have your rock collection on standby. I will. If you don't got one, we'll start one together. We'll sign up for Amazon Prime Rock. <laughs> we'll have a new rock sent to the church every week. We'll just start putting it up there. And if, if there's a new rock up there, you know that you weren't praising the Lord. Amen. How are we going to raise our hallelujah? Is it going to be through rocks? Or is it going to be through the heart? Marvin, give us some heart music. And if I raise my hand, don't look at me like I'm some crazy man.
done yet. We're going to sing a little bit louder, right? Is death defeated? Yes. I said, is death defeated? Yes. I said, is death defeated? Yes. If death is defeated, you all can't live like zombies. You know where zombies live? On Netflix. <laughs> Not in churches. We're going to sing a little louder. We're going to sing with a little more passion. We're going to sing like we have a king. We're going to sing like we're willing to throw down palm branches. We're going to sing like you're willing to take your jacket down and throw it down for Jesus to walk on. We're going to sing like we want to be disciples. We're going to sing like this card asks you. On the back it asks you, do you want to be a follower of Jesus? If you're not following Jesus, this card is for you today. you got to follow the king. He's marching in. Because if you don't follow him when he goes marching in, five days later, you'll be crying, crucify him. you got your choice to go to the upper room and pray for the Holy Spirit to come down or to wait five days and yell, crucify him. But those are the only two choices there are for what happens next in the life of Jesus. There's a place on here if you need to be baptized or rebaptized. It's there for you. Is Jesus calling you to that? We run Facebook ads. We invite our friends. We invite our neighbors because we believe the power of baptism to change people's lives. There's a place on there too. If you want to serve Jesus, we need help. We need help filling these pews at 11 o'clock. Just plan to come for Sabbath school and you will help us. But we need help in all parts of this church because this is going to be a growing church because we're going to... Amen. We're going to do what, Marvin? Sing a little louder. We're going to do what, Marvin? Sing a little louder. We're going to do what, Marvin? Sing a little louder. I don't believe him yet. Sing a little louder. Make me a believer.
Nobody tell Twitter. Shelby was doing some syncopation back there. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, my prayer is short, it's simple. Let us sing a little louder. Let us know that death is defeated, the King is alive. Father, one thing, one thing. I, I, I do pray for the card. I do pray that somebody decides to be baptized today. I do pray. I, I, I trained a new young person to learn how to do the broadcasting service today. I, I pray I have more volunteers who fill out the card who want to help in some way in this church. We need help to sing a little louder. And Father, my last request, my last, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to say Hosanna. I'm going to say Hosanna, Father. I, I, I'm going to say Help us, please, to leave on time for Sabbath school, to get on time for church. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah.